And I would like to thank again Her Majesty for all her support uh, for all these years, uh, support and leadership in GPFI and also wider uh, global financial inclusion community. And I would like to give the floor to Her Majesty Queen Maxima. Governor Fisco, GPFI co-chairs, ladies and gentlemen, it is really a pleasure to join you virtually today. And I'm delighted to see that some of you are able to be in Rome to reconnect and renew bonds in person, finally. Today, I would like to tell you about Isu Hassan. I met Isu in 2019 during a visit to Bangladesh. Three years before, she started to produce hair oil to sell to neighbors and friends. This hair oil was based on her grandmother's recipe, and it was an instant hit. However, to commercialize a home-based informal micro-business, she needed support. So she turned to a local fintech called ShopUp. Via ShopUp's app, Easy could quickly access credit based on her digital transactions. The company also supported her with back office and online administration. Furthermore, ShopUp helped Izu build digital and financial literacy skills with in-person and virtual training. Today, Izu has a booming business with four employees and bought a house for her parents. Now, Izu's story shows how inclusive technology-led innovations can present our best pathways to go beyond digital payments to other invaluable services such as credit, savings and insurance. When offered responsibly, these solutions can create new opportunities, build financial health, empower the excluded and support an inclusive recovery. ISO is not alone. Over the last year, ShopUp saw double-digit growth in revenue. To assist the growing numbers of MSMEs in its digital ecosystem, Shopper's partners with Bangladesh's largest manufacturers, producers and distributors to help smaller enterprises get access to better terms. And in September, the company raised the largest financing round ever for a fintech in Bangladesh. They hope to use this funding to provide tailored digital opportunities to the 4.5 million mom and pop stores across the country the vast majority of which have no digital presence. This is merely a single example of one fintech and small enterprise, but it highlights the unique opportunity upon us, not only in emerging markets, but in advanced ones too. We can capitalize on innovation, not for innovation's sake, but to enable transformative opportunities that improve people's lives and lead to positive development like outcomes. Digitization to support key sectors is crucial for building broad-based growth and development, including MSMEs and smallholder farmers. This is especially needed today. Although global economic activity continues to improve, it is evident that recovery from the COVID-19 crisis has been uneven. While incomes in most advanced economies are forecast to return near pre-pandemic levels next year, only one third of lower middle income countries are expected to make similar recoveries. The groups hurt the most by the pandemic have been the underserved, including women, informal workers, smallholder farmers, and to small businesses. Already with limited access to the digital economy and financial services prior to the crisis, they have disproportionately felt its lingering economic impact. Countries that had previously invested in digital public goods witnessed their worth when the pandemic hit. This includes foundation ID systems, connectivity, interoperable payment infrastructure, consumer protection policies, and digital and financial literacy. These key prerequisites enable the rapid rollout of social transfers, digital financial services, and supported a shift to online payments for goods and services. Yet, 
challenges need to be addressed. Digital risk from fraud, cybercrime and identify, identity theft need to be mitigated. We should be vigilant that increased digitization does not exacerbate the digital divide and other inequities, but instead addresses them. Digital financial literacy, as well as policies that protect MSMEs and consumers, will be key components to this. I do warmly welcome the work of the GPFI this year in developing a menu of policy options to help set a course towards a new, more digital and more inclusive financial normal. One that addresses the digital risks to consumers and small businesses. COVID-19 has reinforced the urgency of these policies. I hope governments, businesses and development champions will use this valuable resource. It will help us refocus our efforts to improve digital financial capabilities and protections for consumers and small businesses. Doing so will enable entrepreneurs like ISU to more effectively and safely grow their businesses and thrive in the future. As only patron of the G20 GPFI, I congratulate the Italian G20 presidency and the GPFI and its two co-chairs for organizing this week's plenary sessions, as well as a high quality of your work. I look forward to following your country's continued progress and cheering your accomplishments. Together, we can drive action to help us recover and build a more inclusive, resilient and responsible digital financial system with expanded opportunities for all. Thank you very much and good luck.